Welcome to the Designing Hollywood podcast in association with The John Campia Show. I am your host, Robert Meyer Burnett. Today's episode is sponsored by Paris Costumes International. This is a very exciting podcast for me because we have Luciano Capozzi with us all the way from Italy. And uh, I'm very excited to speak with him today. Luciano, welcome to the Designing Hollywood podcast. Oh, many thanks. Uh, I'm really honored, really. And so excited to speak with you. Well, I have to ask you, um, obviously, I've talked to a lot of American costume designers and, and British costume designers and and even a Spanish costume designer. And I'm always interested in your background. How did you get into costume design? Was it something that you went to school for? And yeah. tell us tell us how how did you how did you get into the profession? Yeah, you know that uh, I was born in Marino. That was uh, a little town near Rome, and uh, I did all my studies in uh, this little town. And uh, in the 1984, I finished uh, my study in this uh, Institute of Art, and I was graduate as uh, maestro d'arte and designer of jewelry. So you know that uh, it was uh, during the 80s, and uh, where in Italy we lived a bit as a renaissance, a, a, a new renaissance, because there were a lot of stylists, as the, the famous stylists as Armani, Versace, Valentino. So it was normal for a, a guy like me to dream to make something uh, in the fashion uh, system or in the entertainment. World, so it was really exciting for me to participate to uh, at uh, the exam to enter at the first school for costume designer directed by Giulia Maffei, mm. that uh, was a, a really famous Italian costume designer that worked with the amazing directors at the Sica, Damiano Damiani. So I was so excited, and uh, I did two years. Uh, in the school, specific school for costume designers. And when I finished, I immediately start to work as assistant. Uh, I think that it's really important for uh, every uh, professionist to start as, as, as I suggest the new costume designer to start as assistant also, mm. because it, uh, it's really important to, because there is something that uh, you can learn just just as assistant, because probably no one school can can help you to to learn something that you just just uh, to learn when you you are an assistant. And but in contemporary, I I work also as a costume designer. And in the 1991, I signed my first uh, production, my first movie, uh, that was a non video production uh, with Omar Sharif. So wow, I was really lucky. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it, does, it doesn't get much bigger than that. What a great star to work with. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. And I was so nervous. Can you imagine that? But it was so nice and uh, really uh, amazing uh, actor, you know. But also nice person. So it was. Uh, uh, I remind this uh, uh, this work a really nice way. Well, now I have to ask you, I'm a huge fan of Italian cinema. I grew up watching Federico yeah. Fellini. I love Antonioni, Visconti, uh, such a rich history of Italian cinema. Did you grow up, did you love movies, cinema when you were a kid? And what were some of your favorite movies? Yeah, absolutely. You know that when I was a child uh, in the 70s, we had a real um, uh, bad story in Italy because you know that I grew up and when I grew up in the 70s we had the terrorism problem right so we had a lot of society problem but in contrast in contrast the production of movies and television program probably exactly for that to be in contrast with the reality that was so so tough so horrible that were a lot of movies that were really light the typical Italian comedy or the spaghetti western 
or uh, the three layer, famous three layer, uh, you know that. Uh, so, and also because I lost my father when I was a child, really, when I was nine year old, generally I love to go to the cinema because it's, it was a, a way to dream, to dream other, others reality so uh, i grew up with a lot of movies and uh, of course that uh, i remember a lot of the, of the details of some movies that i loved for example that uh, you love the italian movies of course it's a pleasure to know and i loved also american movies <laughs> so i remember that um, uh, till today i remember that the costume, for example, that the priest of Jesus Christ Superstar, that, that was amazing, especially when I compared with the blue jeans that the other character used on the scene. So it was something that incredible. And, uh, but also, um, as every detail of this movie, it was, it, it was amazing for me. And, uh, you know, um, now, especially now, as costume designer, now I realize that there, are, there were a lot of details that I liked, that I loved to see. I didn't understand for what reason. Now that I'm a costume designer, I understand finally that uh, it, it was because there uh, were details that speak, uh, that they speak about the characters. So now I can understand that all the, det the details that I loved are details that now I can use as costume designer. For example, the color, the color of a costumes or uh, uh, the shape of the costumes, no? So I remember, for example, when I was child, I was crazy in love for, with the queen of the <laughs> Snow White, as with the other. <laughs> <laughs> So <laughs> I didn't understand for what reason, but you know that I like his uh, dress, so gothic, vel in velvet. Uh, so it's, I remember now, I know that finally understood when I started to, to study as costume designer and understood that uh, it was because uh, really the costume is the second skin of a character. Really. Sure, you absolutely. Know, uh, yeah, an actor can, uh, can work with his costumes. Uh, also when he, he, he doesn't have uh, speech, Immediately, when you see arrive, when you see uh, a, an actor to arrive, a character to arrive, sure. immediately you can uh, you can feel the, car the, the the sense of the character, the mood of the character, the character thanks to the, the costume. So it's uh, it's something that uh, so I don't think that uh, I, I I wanted to I grew up and I wanted to become a costume designer thanks to a specific movie, but I think that probably my sensitive. Uh, towards uh, some details were important that probably help, helped me to uh, to choose my profession, my work. Sure. Yeah. Well, you know, you mentioned Jesus Christ Superstar, and you you yeah. you worked on a you worked on some biblical epics, Paul the Apostle of Christ. Did do you think that do you think that <laughs> seeing Jesus Christ Superstar when you were a child influenced your work on biblical epics as you got older? <laughs> But you know that, uh, yeah, absolutely. I, I remember just because we started when I worked for this. Um, the, but the, the interesting things uh, regarding these two movie, two movies, is was that they were totally different each other. Yeah. Because uh, you know that uh, indeed the bubbles continuous. Uh, it was the producer wanted and the director wanted something that um, had, uh, wanted to be something more modern. A bit more update for uh, um, a probably a young audience, no? Sure. So for for this reason, I use the uh, uh, more update colors, uh, seventy that that can be a bit update. So uh, some scarf in a, you know there's some little did that of course that what it was a biblical movie so right uh, or jesus but uh, in with the simple details uh, details we try to do something that can be more fascinate, fascinating for a young audience paul uh, compared paul paul it was uh, totally philological so really simple with not colors uh, really uh, simple fabric uh, fabrics uh, nothing else, really historically correct no, and uh, so it's it's nice because I like to to speak about these two movies because you know that it's the clear proof that you can you can make the same argument but in totally different way. 
So it's, you know, because you know that also when you make a historical movie, it's important to understand what, what, what is the mood that the director sure. uses want. Because you can speak about the Renaissance in a totally different way. No, so uh, so it's important to uh, just to just to um, uh, to understand that uh, a movie, also an historical movie, it's it's not it's not a documentary, but a movie. It's a, a personal way to 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 see. A period yes, a hundred percent for the director, for the costume designer, because you know sometimes uh, uh, no when when the people uh, watch the the, the, the uh, historical movie it seems that they want to something that it's it's too documentary. It's, it's another thing. It's an artistic uh, work about a period. So of course that that would be of course that they have to be licensed. They will be have to be a good license, delicate license, of course. But it depends on the, movie, the type of movie, the, 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 the movie. But it's a, it's important to remind that uh, the movie is another thing from the respect the compared the documentary. No, abs- absolutely. Now you know the the I um I watched the Last Kingdom. Uh, I loved it. Was fantastic. I mean, it was so good. Now, how did you find yourself getting involved with that project? How did you get involved with the last kingdom? Uh, yeah. Seven Kings must die. <laughs> yeah, it was an amazing opportunity for me. First of all, uh, there, 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 there was a, a director, Paul Wilton shirt, uh, that, uh, I worked with, uh, for indeed the public continuous mm-hmm. that was preparing was preparing the season five and uh, he called me and tried to and asked me to, to luciano uh, are you available for uh, to to do i was so excited unfortunately i was busy with another big uh, project so it was really impossible for me to do and i was so sad but i continue to i continue to 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 remain in contact with the producer so when they uh, were starting to uh, to produce uh, uh, the new movie they called me um, again and with the director the new director at Barsgate uh, they asked me that if, if it was available and finally I, I, I accepted <laughs> and I immediately ran to uh, Hungary to to make this movie because I I was a fan also eh, of the the, the of the, the series. So yeah, no, the series <laughs> so was, was yeah, it was yeah, terrific. Yeah, it was, so now, wh- how okay when when you start on a project like like Seven yeah. Kings, how do you begin? Do you begin with the script? Do you start with the the actors? Do you talk to the director? How do you start your process? Uh, yeah, the first step is to speak with the producer that uh, uh, introduce uh, your yourself in the, the, the in the story and the, the project. Of course, that immediately after with the director that speak about the project, but uh, for the artistic uh, view. And uh, at the beginning, uh, generally it's it's not ready the script, probably just ready a synopsis. But it's important also the synopsis to understand what is uh, the, the, the exact the arguments, uh, how many people probably you will see. So it's just a generic idea about the movies. And uh, the first steps after this conversation is to try uh, to study, to, 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 to try to study exactly the period that you have to work with and to uh, research the different uh, uh, references something historically correct something uh, that can be just a, an emotion you know can be just uh, just to to influence your style in the, after this uh, uh, this this preparation and mm. uh, in, immediately you can i for example my, in my experience uh, i started to to research this material and with my assistant but immediately i started to think to think also uh, reg- about the, the, the fabrics, because you know that for me it was really important to immediately understand uh, the style, the texture. You know that my costumes are really important, the colors and the textures of the. Because uh, I need I need really <laughs> something that speaks in front of the camera. Right. So, 
generate a eight flat fabric uh, because it's it's a bit too boring you know i like that uh, with also with the costume you can suggest something something else something that probably uh, is not clear directly clear but uh, so for this reason the research of the fabric the fabric the material uh, was really important uh, also because you have to know that in four seven kings uh, uh, me and my team we couldn't use the stock that they used before so we had to re prepare everything and just in three months, because in two months and a half, because in January, uh, one month before to shoot, we, we had the fittings uh, section. So we had just to prepare everything in two months. So it wasn't simple, but uh, it was really exciting. Now, how do you... How, do you like working with actors? And once, once you have an actor cast in the part and you, you have to start costuming an actor... How is your relationship with an actor? How do you how do you help or work with an actor to build the character? Yeah, yeah. I return a little bit and the, the, the previous question because you told me you asked me also uh, the, the work with the actors. The the, the work with the actors about the actors or about the characters is the final part of the preparation. Mm. Because generally, arrive just at the end. Of course, that when I start to to read something immediately. Uh, I think to, to the principals, of course, but the real work for the on, for the actors, for the principal, generally arrive at the end of the preparation mm. when you already define the word. Okay. There, you know? <laughs> right. In, in case of course that it was a, a nice, really nice, because you know that they are a family. After five years of collaboration, each other are really a family so it was really nice they are really uh, nice person nice guys and uh, really collaborative the collaboration it's really important with the actors because you know that uh, it's simple to not simple but <laughs> can no. be there to to draw something no but the, the of course a costume designer has to, to work with with the real person yes as a real body a real the colors uh, specific colors and probably uh, move in, uh, himself in a specific way. So a costume designer has to respect a lot of things when, when work for the principal. So, mm -hmm. of course, that the collaboration with the actors absolutely is uh, so important. And I was lucky in this case because Alexander, for example, that was uh, lovely. You know that uh, uh, each of the crew told me, did you see Alexander? I didn't see yet because he arrived just... Uh, the, 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 the one month before to shoot <laughs> and because he's so lovely everyone told me oh he's so lovely he's so lovely and they repeated me a uh, uh, point I told you I'm so sorry but I think that it's too lovely to be real because everyone told me <laughs> <laughs> no, he, he is really lo uh, lovely it was a pleasure to, to work with him and uh, he appreciated a lot that we tried in a really delicate way to make him a little bit older because you know in this movie uh, the time is a little bit past so uh, it was important to indicate that uh, this character were uh, a bit older so in simple way without to make uh, too much things but you know that with some quotes for example that uh, help him to move himself in a different way uh, with the armors that were uh, a bit less stiff so with little detail that can uh, underline that uh, uh, the time was passing by Bamburg well <laughs> that's, that's great um, yeah. now, now I, one of the questions that I, I wanted to ask you too um, when you're putting together a lookbook, like on something yeah. like this, when you put together your book, how extensive is it? Is it big? How long does it take you to put together a lookbook for a project like this? Yeah, yeah. Depends. Of course, that you know that uh, the mood books are really del it's a, a really a delicate thing because you know that the mood books is something that you have to. Uh, it's something that you used to, to introduce your idea about the characters, about the movie, to the director, to the producer. So it's something that can be really delicate because, of course, it's just the first step. But right. in this first step, you have to illustrate your ideas, your, 
your ideas or mood. Generally, you know that um, uh, I remember that when I started to be to be an assistant, all these amazing movies that uh, <laughs> uh, that they prepared uh, in the eighties had six months of preparation. Yeah. Now everything is a bit changed. Now you know that okay. So probably you have to prepare this kind of the moves just in uh, two three weeks. So we have to run a little bit, but it's okay. It's important to have nice collaborators, you know, because uh, the, it's really important to have a good team, and immediately to uh, to follow the indication of the director to immediately to research. A lot. Fortunately, now with net also, uh, it's, it's it's more simple that when when I started, you know, that I remember a lot of hours in the uh, library, mm. the library to, to see everything. And also now, of course, that there is also this. Uh, but it's important to see also in in the, in the specific case, of course, that. Uh, uh, the film, uh, the Seven Kings. Uh, it was really important to see also the previous season. Right. You know? Sure. Yeah. To compare the, to compare the different uh, moment of this character. So uh, we started also after to see the, all the, the, the previous seasons, and uh, started immediately to uh, to find something that could be um, good for me. So, but not not more than three weeks, really. Wow. That's yeah. quick. <laughs> yeah. Fortunately, I had also good assistant that helped me to sketch, helped me to uh, to find the material. Yeah, you know that uh, it, it wasn't simple for that, but uh, you know that it was exciting also for that. No, absolutely. I mean, uh, man, that's that's a tough. That's a that's quick. That's fast. I I would be nervous <laughs> to have yeah. to work that fast. Um, yeah. Well, it's interesting. You, you on this project, you worked with Hungarians and other Italians to create a, more of these accessories and things like that. To sort of, how, how did how did that collaboration work, and and what was important about the things that you were creating? Yeah, absolutely. It was really. I need to to have a lot of collaborators because we we don't have a lot of time to. We have time, but not much to 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 uh, prepare new things because as i told you uh, before we had to prepare everything new so for this reason it was important to have a lot of collaborators that can help me to receive all this material in time really good time to shoot so for this reason i of course that i work with my usual collab italian collaborators because you know that we have a long story of the amazing factories uh, workshops that um, make uh, Jenny uh, amazing things. But I work also in Spain with Cornet, with uh, Paris, sorry. And uh, that they are amazing because uh, it's so simple. They are so well organized that uh, it, it is so simple to, uh, to work with them. But also in Hungary. So um, we had a lot of collaborators around Europe. And also, I had also some collaborators in Morocco. Oh, okay. So, yeah. So it was nice because you know that in this case uh, it was important. For example, that all the leather things are, uh, were done in um, Bulgar in Hungary, excuse me. Uh, and uh, I used the same collaborators that already did mm. the previous season. It was really important to have a continuity, no? So it was really important, also for especially for the actors, no, for the principals. And uh, but it was important. It's nice to collaborate with a lot of people around the world because you know that uh, arrive different things uh, with a different touch. And so when you, you know, use everything together, the result is amazing. I think really. Yeah, because, you know. Yeah, because there are you know that also a long tradition to work. So the leather, mm, the leather cutter, uh, the Hungarian, Hungarian leather cutter, uh, worked in a different way compared. Uh, you know? So it's nice to see this difference because at the end you have a real rich solution, rich costumes. Yeah. Yeah. So that so it's great. I mean, having that diversity in terms of the artisans makes the costumes more interesting. I would yeah. think. Um, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. 
Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, it's funny. My girlfriend got me into watching all of this. She was watching it before I was, and I sat down and I started to watch. I'm like, this is great. You know, and we oh, watched. Okay. So it was, it was, it was really terrific. Now, uh, the different villages have different yeah. colors, things like that, to sort of differentiate, so you know where you are. Um, how did you decide on those colors? Yeah, also for that, you know, that um, it was important when I decided to make this movie, it was important for me to to understand that I had to, to push my style, to be respectful of right. the story that we had before. So also for the color palette, no? uh, especially for the soldier, I had to reuse the same color palette that they used before because it was impossible for me after five years of season to change totally. Now the the Saxon sword, the color of the Saxon sword, right. or the black sword, it was impossible. Uh, yeah, and uh, of course that I tried to 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 push my style also in this way, because uh, uh, I tried to to use the colors that uh, uh, not too vivid, not too graphic. So, uh, of course, in contrast, to help the the, the audience to understand. Uh, 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 the difference between each group, but in a more natural way. So, uh, for for this uh, for this reason, I use a lot of color that uh, uh, more natural color, less chemical color, mm. and uh, at the end, uh, I think that the result is uh, it's clear. Uh, there are the difference. But also because I think that honestly, uh, it, it, they are more uh, historical correct. Right. For, for my touch, for my test also. And uh, for example, that uh, the Saxon, uh, the Saxon uh, uh, court used uh, a bit more colors, no? That no uh, beautiful color, but a bit mute. And uh, the Vikings uh, used the the the, the, the wood soldiers used the, uh, also them natural color, but really in a contrast way. So also because you know that to use these. Uh, uh, of colors, I think that uh, was uh, helpful to to speak about a story that uh, had to be dirty, dark, gritty, you know, so wild. So it, 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 I think that it was the only palette that I can use. Right. Could, now, yeah. now let me ask you. So, do you think when you're when you're make a movie is a movie? It's not like you said a documentary. Yeah. How important. You have to find you. You can be historically accurate, or you can have style. You know, and how important yeah. how important is it to be historically accurate, but you also want to put your style into it? Yeah. Is there is there a plate? Can you meet somewhere in the middle, or is it more important to have style, or more important to be historically accurate? Yeah. Yeah, uh, it's a nice question. Thanks, because it's a really delicate question. You know that, uh, as, a, as I told you before, a movie is an artistic, you know, uh, expression <laughs> of a story. Uh, of a story. So uh, the documentary has to be really uh, precise. So everything has to be philological, correct. Yes. And so, you know, it's impossible to push uh, something of uh, some artistic license. The movie has to underline the character, so and also because a movie, it's uh, you know that the audience of the movie it's a modern audience. So uh, sometimes it's a really interesting things, things, but uh, thing, but sometimes for a costume design it's really difficult to uh, to explain. But uh, for the modern audience, if you use it, something that it's really historical correct, probably they one feeling that it's uh, historical correct right know? because that now of course that with a lot of uh, medium a net the net uh, uh, the, the movies of course but uh, it's really it's really simple that something that it's not historical correct but arrive as credible you know that it's important for a costume designer more than to do beautiful costume to do true costume, credible costume. So for this reason, of course, that uh, uh, to underline some some colors of the, the psychology of the characters, mm. it's important to do some artistic license. Yes, because you're so, making a movie. Also, 
Yeah, exactly. Also because, honestly, I remember that uh, I did in the past one movie, uh, one series about the 18th century's uh, story. And uh, uh, there was an actor that was uh, so modern, with a body so modern, you know, that was a muscle. Uh, right. <laughs> so it was impossible to use the, the, the in quartate, the jacket as, uh, it's really, it was really impossible. So, of course, that in this case also, uh, it's, it's impossible don't use, uh, not to use uh, uh, license right. uh, to cut to, to cut uh, to cut a jacket to cut a pair of pants. So also in this way we use the license artistic license that are important. It's important that the result is credible. You know. Right. Yes. A hundred percent. No, I totally so, un- because that the the audience feel that it's something that it's credible. Uh, oh no! So it's uh, it's a delicate passage, but it's really important. Yeah. No, I think so too. And plus, you know, in the in the eighteen hundreds, people didn't work out. <laughs> you know, they didn't. They didn't <laughs> exactly. I mean, and the bodies. Exactly. Nobody has the bodies that yeah. people had today. <laughs> yeah, the women also. You know that. You know, I, I remember that in another movies uh, that uh, I was uh, shooting uh, in. Um, of Bulgaria, and uh, uh, we we had to speak about the sol- Italian soldiers because you know some, sometimes that and the faces were amazing. Really, re- remember me the real Italian soldiers, but the body was totally different. <laughs> right. the, the problem was in this case that uh, I used the original jacket, military jacket, from the forties. It, it was in, in, impossible to use. Was not possible to use because the body was totally changed. So we had to uh, put a lot of material more to try to, to, to wear these people in the morning because uh, it was a disaster. So, you know, <laughs> now for this reason, probably it was, it was better to, to make new things. Also, the women is, are totally different. Now the women are taller, uh, with muscular too. So and, uh, totally another conception, conception, another idea of the, the 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 body, so it's impossible. Also, for this reason, it's important to understand that the movie is an artistic way to speak about a, a period. Yes, that that's is that frustrating for you sometimes. I mean, like you said, sometimes it's impossible to make a, a real jacket work. Do yeah. you get do you get upset? Uh, um, Frustrated. Yeah, yeah, a bit when uh, you know that uh, um, uh, you know that th- it's a, it's a good work to to make credible something that is not credible, you know, that it's not real. Of course that. So of, of course that it's it's a play for each of us uh, in in the crew. So for the dog, the the, the OP, for the art director. So of course that it's important to to collaborate um, everyone. So. Because, for example, that when you use a, a, a costume that it's a bit uh, um, a bit more modern than the historical uh, reconstruction, but put the, these costumes in front of the uh, the background that it's realistic, it's really real. Of course, that uh, we, we, you have to calibrate the <laughs> the, 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 the results. It's, so, right. it's something that not so simple, but it's not frustrating uh, generally. It's important to know exactly when you start to work, uh, where, uh, where is the direction that you want to follow. Right. You know? Yeah, no, it's, absolutely. It's important, it's important to decide at the beginning. Okay, it's not a documentary, so we, we, have to, we can uh, use a, a license in this way, not in the other way. Uh, so uh, make, this mo- make this job really interesting. Not yes. simple, but interesting, yeah. <laughs> oh, so what, what are some of the biggest challenges that you face as a costume designer? What, what are some of the hardest things that you have to, to deal with? In, the, in the Seven Kings or in general? Just in general. Okay. Like as a, in terms yeah, of, yeah. You, I mean, you've, you've yeah. touched on some of them. It's really interesting. But what are, yeah, in general? In general, you know that the challenge is that uh, I know that uh, uh, when I was young, uh, when I was a young costume designer, I was so probably a bit naive, but rich of enthusiasm. 
no? So and uh, so probably the the, the most the most important challenge now for me is to conserve these enthusiasts for my work. Mm. Because you know that sometimes the timing to prepare is changing. Uh, the kinds of uh, to work is changing, but it's important to conserve the, the same attitude. So I'm lucky because I really love my, my job. Right. So and, and uh, um, so you know the Italian man a dreamer, but it's important to 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 remain a dreamer, but with the feet really anchored uh, on the floor. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a so great. This, yeah. <laughs> uh, now, do you? Well, since you're talking about being young, maybe more naive. There's a lot of people that watch these podcasts that might want to get into costume design what advice or what advice if you knew yourself when you were just starting out what advice could you give to young people about what they should do to get into costume design yeah absolutely they, they i think that a suggestion that i can uh, tell them is to to be really sure about themselves uh, of course to think that it's a work amazing work uh, that it's not so simple. Probably it's interesting sometimes, it's, but sometimes, often, it's also an hard work. It's tough work because you know that you work uh, outside, you work for a lot of hours uh, under the rain. Uh, so <laughs> it's, it's not so simple. You know that generally, I when I spoke with the. the, the, the friends or young guys that oh it's amazing your work it's because probably they uh, they know just the, 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 the more uh, superficial elements that know you are the show business but it's not so that the, the work our work it's a, it's a strong work really yeah I know <laughs> so yeah and uh, also because it's important to have also some skin as a psychologist also right for actors <laughs> <laughs> to work with a lot of people, with a lot of actors too. It's not simple, so it's <laughs> it's a complicated <laughs> work, but I really love. So and uh, I can just suggest to 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 believe in themselves and to continue to uh, to work because you know the, another beautiful things of our job that every movie is different. So, of course, this is also the, the challenge, no? That it's important to to remain uh, to remain curious, to remain uh, enthusiastic, enthusiastic uh, of your work. So, it's something that uh, I really think that it's important to remind, to remember. Yeah. You know, in in America, I think we Americans believe that the best clothes come from Italy. I mean, we, we, because, you know, yes. you grow up and everyone wants to wear Italian suits. Yeah. And and yeah. Yeah. do you think that's true? Do you think Italians make the best clothes? Uh, honestly? Yeah. Honestly, <laughs> yeah, yes. I mean, a big part. But no, because no, 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 no. I don't want to, I don't want to joke. No, I think that, you know, that in Italy we have, uh, fortunately for us, uh, it, it, it's changing a bit the situation, but we have a lot of artisans uh, that right. work for, and uh, we have a, uh, we, we we invented the Breta Porte. Mm -hmm. Yes, the, the, the real uh, the French people now had the height, height fashion for that society. Uh, we invented the Breta Porte. That exactly is the, the proof that the quality of the material can be used by everyone. Yes. Can be also cheaper compared a nice uh, eight fashion um, dress. Uh, but it's, it was possible because we had a lot of uh, artisans that uh, worked uh, on the fabrics, mm. no? That prepared the fabrics, but prepared the shoes, no? And the details. So for this reason, I think that we had uh, an amazing school from the past. And also because you know that uh, also for for a, a, a simple reasons also. Uh, really, I think that uh, a lot of American people that love Rome and that, because we are lucky really, probably our problem, the problem with Italian that probably forget this situation, uh, that we are living in a museum under the sky. Right. 
Yeah, right. so it's uh, really, it's something that uh, yes. it's, it's so natural for us, probably too natural, that now the problem for a lot of young people, they don't make attention to everything that uh, live around them. So uh, I think that I was lucky because really I grew up in the 80s. In the 70s, that weren't really good uh, in Italy, but in the 80s, that were so rich of enthusiasm, of passion for, uh, no, for the made in Italy. Uh, and so now that the story of Codex, uh, it's a bit different, but uh, we conserve the, 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 the skill to, to, to do beautiful things. Also because we are lucky, arrived from the past, so we didn't do nothing for that. We are just lucky. But we had a lot of amazing painters, a lot of amazing church, a lot of uh, museum, uh, everything. In a all uh, little town, it's possible to to see, to visit a museum or to visit a beautiful church, uh, location, a theater, a Roman theater that are, are around the, 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 the Italy, all around. The yeah, I, I never so. thought about that. That's a really interesting point. That's re- I love yeah, that. So, you, you, yeah. so, uh, so it's uh, it's something that uh, uh, it's it's uh, it's not simple for the other people to to. I have, for example, that a friend that arrived from Israel to paint to to learn to paint in Florence because it was uh, he was so happy because to, he lived for uh, uh, four weeks. It was just a dream, you know, in front of this amazing. I remember that the first time that. I was in Florence. I had the problem with the, the, the uh, to, we, to, to see all these textures, all these amazing things. You know that, uh, and so it's because it's it's really uh, rich. Of every city has a lot of uh, treasures. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, I would that I would imagine that would be very inspiring. And when I was a kid, when I was growing up, like I loved Italian movies of the 60s like la dolce vita i love uh, that and i loved marcello mastriani and uh, and, and yeah. monica vitti you know and all the the i thought that it, it italy was the coolest place <laughs> like when i was, and and i've only been to italy i've been to florence and it's like you said it's absolutely spectacular i mean it's it's like yeah. a dream. Florence is like a dream. Tuscany yeah. Uh, yeah, is, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's, it's, yeah. uh, you know, that it was a strange story. You know, that after the second world war, uh, Italy was just totally destroyed. So thanks to the American people also, we started to, to live in a better way. And it was nice because, you know, Hollywood on the Tiber, it was amazing. You know, remember that all the American stars that arrived in Rome to make something that uh, it was a, a nice situation. And uh, also also a bit kitsch also because we did a lot of uh, uh, paper movies, uh, B movies. But it was amazing because there was an industry, no? Yeah, oh yeah. Uh, not, not like the American, of course, but uh, it, there was a business, a real business that probably... Uh, it's it's a bit uh, past, but it could be nice to to also because it's so incredible that uh, if you if you think that these actors arrive from little mm, town really and uh, because no one arrived directly from Rome but little town near Rome and became so famous around the world, so uh, it was amazing story and uh, I think that I like uh, Tarantino, all the act- all the directors that love the the, the oh. used the, used their law for the America for the Italian movies in their movie, in their film and the movies. So it's amazing for that. Really. No, I, I mean uh, again, like I told you, growing up with Sergio Leone and and um, yeah. uh, Dario Argento sure. and and even in 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 like Mario Mario Bava, who I loved, who was a cinematographer, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and then his his son um, Lamberto Bava went on and made terror films yeah. in the eighties. You know, <laughs> yeah, film that probably wasn't so uh, important at the beginning but became a cult, you know, it's incredible. This is the story of the movies, of the cinema. You know, there's some, some movies that probably uh, when, uh, when uh, uh, was uh, realized, uh, wasn't really uh, considered, but became a cult mm-hmm. in the time. Yes. So it's, uh, it's an amazing story for that, yeah. 
No, it, it really is. And, and that's, I think that, that, like you said, a lot of American directors like Tarantino and, and, and yeah. were totally inspired. I mean, you think about like Sergio Leone, even today is still one of the most yeah. influential directors of yeah. all time. Yeah. Yeah. Also, the music, if you think that the, 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 uh, the music of Morricone, you know, so, so it's amazing that to, to oh. hear this, this soundtrack of this movie, of, the, 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 of this movie, it's are so modern, so contemporary. So I think that it's, uh, you know, that there are some movies that uh, uh, d uh, don't become older. Right. Don't be careful. No. Oh, I... So remain, remain uh, classical, evergreen, but also the American. So it's you know that it's it's nice to see that uh, that there are some something that will remain uh, so fresh. Yeah. No. Absolutely. Fresh. I just bought. Um, there's a composer, a musician. His name's Stelvio Cipriani. Yeah. St yeah, yeah. From yeah, the, yeah, in, yeah. in the '60s, I just bought an album of yeah, his. Yeah, yeah, yeah yesterday yeah. and i i love it. i mean his music you know he yeah. was making music for movies in the 60s i they're still it's fantastic yeah yeah remain remain because it's so contemporary no it's so in this case probably it's something that will remain with us and uh, uh forever so yeah so. absolutely well this now, is the power this is the power of the cinema that uh, you know that the cinema has this power that uh, can make something that remain evergreen, remain uh, in deep of the people uh, for uh, a lot of time. So, you know. and and well, what's great now too with with streaming like Netflix and and you everyone is seeing more movies made from around the world. People are watching films in America. Yeah. I think from from Europe, from India, yeah. from. Korea yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's fantastic yeah. that we yeah, get to absolutely because you know that it's a, it's a bit as when I told you that the, the, the different things that when arrive the different elements of a costume from the different countries is the same because you know that when you see a movie from Mexico as totally different color it's so beautiful because it seems that you can you can make a trip just in a uh, uh, 30 minutes, but immediately you can uh, you can arrive in another culture, in another. You know that it was amazing because I did uh, a contemporary movie last year that will arrive in the USA uh, in January, next January, and uh, a, a part was uh, shooted in Italy, a part in Guatemala. It was amazing to to have this collaboration and to speak the same uh, the same the same language. The, the language of the movie, you know, that, 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 right. it was really amazing. Yeah. Was, Can uh, you tell us the name of the film? What, what, what is it? What's the movie called? Yes. Uh, this movie is a uh, state of consciousness by Mark Stock, Stock, Mark Stockness. Yeah. Sorry. The, the name. I, I, no, I, it's okay. I don't want to, to make error. Sorry. Yeah. No. Now, are you, can people follow you on Instagram? Are you on social media where people can look at your work? Yeah, uh, I am a website that I um, would like to invite you to, to visit. And of course, that I use Instagram too, and a page of Facebook. So I try to be social, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's not simple because it's another play, but it's, uh, it's important to, uh, because, you know, that now it's a medium that really is so used. So, so a lot of people use this, this medium. So it's really important to speak also about that. Mm, no, abs way. absolutely. Yeah. Also, because sometimes you, you, for example, on Instagram, I like to put some photos uh, of my films that so you can uh, the, the the audience can see some details that probably is not simple to find another way. So why not? I think that you know, it's a nice way to to speak about yourself, to speak about your job. So no, it's fantastic. Yeah. Now, can people find you on Instagram under Luciano Capozzi? Is it just your name? Yeah, 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 yeah. The Luciano Capozzi, costume designer. It's, you can find the website and the page, Instagram page. So it's really simple to follow me. Well, listen, it has been a great honor to speak with you today. And I want to thank you for, for being on the podcast. This has been very interesting. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, I, I, this was just fantastic. So thank you for your okay. time. It's, it's really kind of you. It's really kind of you. And many thanks for your attention, for your interest in my work. And uh, so many thanks and a finger crossed. Well, Luciano Capozzi, thank you so much for being on the Designing Hollywood podcast.
uh, to you. It was a real pleasure. And a special thanks to our sponsor, Paris Costumes. Paris Costumes has been a part of the history of the European theater, film, and television industry since 1856 and has become 21st century tailors. A special thank you to founder and executive producer, Martika Ibarra, co-founder, costume designer, the legendary Marilyn Vance, and of course, John Campia from The John Campia Show. Thank you to all of our viewers for tuning in and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Tune in to the audio version wherever you listen to podcasts. I am, of course, your host, Robert Meyer Burnett, and you can find me on Instagram at rmburnett or find me on Twitter at burnettrm or on YouTube at Post Geek Singularity. Thanks very much. Like, subscribe, and give us your comments. What would you like to see on the channel? Right down below. Thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you on the next episode of Designing Holly.